Good morning, Benjamin. Teach me to dive. Technical dive instructor in Idaho coming up with your latest message. And, and I go through these and I think about what I want to talk about and what it kind of been, has been brought up during classes that I've been teaching or conversations I've had. And last night while teaching a class, I had a few students ask about the density of in gas difference and calculating the difference between in relationship to sac rate and sac rate calculation. Now, while we briefly touched on a question that was quite fair, I may have glossed over it a little too quickly with a response that was more of a statement that the difference between gases and capacities in a cylinder was negligible. Now, the longer answer to this question uh, is to take into account the Z factor when calculating the gas capacity of a cylinder. Now, before we touch on what the Z factor is, it's important to consider the actual capacity of tanks. Now, an example, tanks hold as much as 10% less air than the commonly used size to describe them. Now, and that could be up to 20% less for the gases other than air. Now, an example, an S80 or a Catalina 80 aluminum is listed as 80 cubic feet. Don't believe it, when it's actually only 77.4 cubic feet. Now, this is one of the nice things that we have with modern HP steel tanks. These tanks tend to be more accurate in describing the actual capacity. For example, if you were to take a Faber uh, HP 100 that says it's 100 cubic feet, it actually is 100 cubic feet. But the issue becomes more um, than the sheer variety uh, of tanks out there because there's a lot of manufacturers out there. There's a lot of sizes out there and they, there's been scuba tanks. We have scuba tanks in the dive shop that I work out of um, that are from the 60s. So. There's a lot of variety out there to be uh, to be aware of, but the issue becomes more than just a sheer variety of tanks for diving. It becomes larger issues as well. So using the manufacturer's listed liter volume creates a much more concise and accurate standard for measuring um, the tanks and uh, giving us a more accurate value that we can rely upon. Now, once we are fully able to appreciate the accuracy of using the published liter size of a particular tank, we can begin to take into consideration the Z factor for the gas that we plan to dive. Now, the Z factor is used to determine how the gases will compress in a cylinder and is used to calculate the compressibility factor, its Z factor. This factor has differing values based upon gas, temperature, and total pressure. Now, so for example, let's look at a few. So for example, if we took air, 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen, basically, we're gonna be very generalist. We're not gonna talk about that mysterious 1%. So if we took that air at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and we had it at 2015 PSI, in an aluminum 80, that gives it a compressibility Z factor of 0.9984, giving it, if it was actually 80 cubic feet, giving that a uh, true capacity of 80.1282. Now, interestingly enough, we just talked about that 70 uh, degree Fahrenheit at 2015 PSI, the Z factor was 0.9984. Now, in that same tank, once we compress it up to 3000 PSI, the Z factor increases to 1.0320, giving that capacity down to 77.5193, based upon the idea if it was actually an 80 cubic foot tank. So, and now it changes again if we get to 3600 PSI, which is 1.06. 1.5 Z factor, giving that 80 cubic foot 75.3650. So we looked at it, 2000 PSI um, at 70 degrees Fahrenheit for air, compresses to 0.99, at 3000 it compresses to 1.03, at 3600 it compresses to 1.06. So you can see there's a variety of that. Now if we looked at nitrox, uh, we can get the same basic idea. Nitrox, 32% is 72 degrees. 2000 is 0.9912. At 3000 is point, uh, 1.021. And then at, at 3600, it's 1.04. So you can see it's a, a slight variety difference. For example, the difference between air and nitrox 32 is about 0.02% roughly, right? Trimix is a whole different story as well. Trimix, as we know, helium doesn't compress as densely as air or uh, nitrogen. But at 2015, nitrox 1070 in an 80 cubic foot tank is 1.083. So it's 8% difference. 
So the true capacity of an 80 cubic foot cylinder at 70 degrees at 2000 PSI is 73 cubic feet. If we take that same at 3000 PSI, that 80 cubic feet is now uh, 69 cubic feet. And at 3600, we don't have a huge change. Um, it's still 69 cubic feet. Now, you might be asking yourself, how do you calculate this? So to calculate the true cylinder capacity of a gas, you'd simply divide the ideal capacity by the Z factor. Now, with this, it's worth noting that this is not a straight line, as you kind of notice. It's a varied line, but rather a curve and has a variance that is dependent on the amount of pressure. Now, in the end, there is a uh, general average that can be counted on. Now, it is worth noting that different gases create different sac rates for multiple reasons. And it is to your advantage to make sure that you're tracking your sac rate throughout a history of diving and dividing all uh, dives into categories. <coughs> for example, in all your nitrox dives, if you're doing all nitrox dives in warm water, 70 degrees drift dives, um, and you're using 32%, put all those in one bucket and start calculating those out. Um, Put another bucket for cold water dives, for air dives, for warm dives, for sea level dives, for altitude dives. Yes, at altitude, you're gonna have a different sac rate. In cold water, you're gonna have a different sac rate. Now, also keep in mind factors like travel, hydration, how tired you are, whether your wife beat the hell out of you last night. My wife is amazing. She's never raised her voice to me once. I'm amazed. Um, but if you have that issues, um, there's a lot of things that take into account. Now as well, of course, as diving efforts should be noted to be able to help determine an accurate dive sac rate profile. Now while many new divers refer to their computers and simply look at their PSI per minute for their sac rate, this is far from being anything that can be considered very accurate or very useful for more complex dive planning. This is one of the reasons it's so important to ensure that you are using the manufactured listed liter capacity instead of the described cylinder size on relying on a PSI per minute based on a formula that is missing most of the most important data. Now, by using the metric liter size of a tank and multiplying this by the bar pressure, you are able to determine a more accurate picture of the actual amount of usable gas within instead of guessing based on the potential inaccuracy or inaccurate classification number in cubic feet. Um, to increase the accuracy of this raw data, adding the Z factor calculation will give the diver more accurate picture of the amount of gas available and prepare them to be able to plan their dives accordingly. Now, overall gas management is an important part of any diver plan and becomes critical the more complex the dive um, and technicalities of that dive are. Being able to remove as many variables from the gas calculation helps ensure a much higher potential for success and preparing for potential emergencies that may arise. Uh, capacity calculations also ignore the fact that it is difficult for a diver to breathe the residual gas in a tank below 150 pi PSI or 10 bar due to regulator flow restrictions and the fact that the pressure gauges can be significantly inaccurate, especially when it comes to lower gas levels. Now with this, it becomes even more important to plan your dives with a generous amount of reserve gas. Adopting a policy of diving the rule of thirds helps ensure that this that the diver is not only more prepared for an emergency that they might have, but also for one that their buddy may experience as well. No, wait, I didn't see that. The last I saw you tell me was just to get it done. So uh, the uh, biggest thing on this is making sure that as we're working with our dive buddies that we're planning out all that key pieces of information to make sure that we're safe, they're safe, and able to plan out a dive accordingly. Now, Z factors are a fantastic way, but again, if you don't quite understand this, take a class. As you start moving up in the chain, a, a nice nitrox class, if you haven't taken nitrox, is a great way to go. Take those times and really dig into this information. Make sure you're using the most information. If you email us directly, I have a list of all, well, not, maybe not all, but only 128 of the most common tanks used in existence today with their Z factors, with their actual leader capacities, with their buoyancy factors. If you email me directly, I will happily send you that list. It's an Excel spreadsheet, so you'll have to 
probably have Excel. But other than that, um, I'm happy to help any way I can. Again, my name is Benjamin Hatfield. I am with Teach Me to Dive. I'm a technical dive instructor. I live in Idaho. I teach diving. I teach technical diving. I teach side mount. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Also, in the uh, description of this, I will put all the uh, description of Z factors in there for you as well. If you have any questions, reach out. Again, Benjamin Hatfield, Teach Me to Dive. Go get them.